Hi there, people. Welcome to next to my next stream. And today, uh, as you probably know, if you have read the blog post or the comments under this stream, uh, I'm starting the beta testing phase for Reward Paint and Reward Cursor Editor, and that means that I will not be I won't be adding uh, new features, but I will be looking for bugs. And if you want, you can download uh, the current version for Paint or Cursor Editor and help find, find me bugs in these versions. And I expect that uh, the final versions will be available in in three weeks. The next stream should be a celebration of the final release. So it of course depends on... I, I presume that uh, a major bug won't be found and that everything will be working more or less as it should. So in today's stream I would like to review all the changes between the previous release version and the new version. So let's start with the cursor editor and let me open a random cursor and we will look on the changes. So the first change if you are used to the old version, you will see that the colors of the canvas are slightly different. It should be, uh, it should, these colors should not be as aggressive as, as the old ones. And uh, okay, uh, the other no, that, that's one change, and there are. Um, some changes related to the canvas, some more changes. One of the changes is, for example, the size of these control handles, and you can modify that, that size. Another change is that when you, your mouse leaves the canvas area, these control points disappear. So, that, that is problem, for example, if you have a shape that has a lot of control handles and it's, for example, small, and then these control handles can obscure a large portion of the shape and when you, when the mouse, mouse cursor leaves, in the new version, the control handles disappear and you can quickly see uh, the canvas without these control handles obscuring it. So that's one change. Also I will be I will have to check the comments occasionally because my second display is not working. So another change that was made to the cursor editor was to this preview preview window. And here you cannot see it but if I for example open the arrow cursor, you can see that the Windows 11 cursors contain much more image sizes than the Windows 7 or older, older. And in the current version, it was possible to open these uh, files with large cursors, but this preview window uh, you would have to increase its size to be able to select the individual individual cursors and uh, the, the sizes but in this, in the new version the window automatically, automatically scrolls and the selected image size is always in the center and you can go left or right so you won't be stuck 
so that's this change another change is let me create a new cursor or look at the creation of new cursor you can now select whether you want to start with a raster layer or a vector layer and support for vector layers is new in cursor editor so when you create a cursor with a vector layer you can now enjoy all the benefits of working with vectors that means if you draw a shape and draw, then draw another you can get back to the old one and change its properties you are not stuck anymore uh, as in the previous version when you finished drawing with a drawing tool in the old version and then switch to another tool you will were not able to go back and modify what you have created with the previous tool so if you choose to work with vector layers you can now do that and uh, also this this side panel was slightly redesigned layers the list of layers is now uh, at the bottom of this panel and you can close it if you if you want to use the cursor editor as you were using it before that means for example starting with the raster layer and then using for example just the, the pencil tool then the layers won't bother you so that's that and but you can combine vector layers and raster layers if I add a raster layer here and I can work with it hmm. what I have shown you before is this morph tool and it works like this you need at least two frames and the, the frames should have the same number of layers and same, same number of, of objects in both the uh, in both of these frames but you would you would modify the shapes Uh, in each of the, these layers, for example, like this, and let me this make like this, and you can see the animation here. This triangle is somehow being changed. And when I select this first layer and then the morph command, then I can select the number of steps I want to generate in between these two frames. So it, it has created these four frames for me and you can see on this preview animation that now the small triangle is being transformed into this larger triangle. So you can create the keyframes and then let the editor generate the in-between frames for you. So that should help you. Uh, with your creative work so because in real world paint we have we now have uh, the improved system for applying layer styles and basically you have this style submenu that list the list the most commonly used effects and these will be applied to the currently selected layer so let me for example delete these generated frames first and apply apply for example the blur fill oh that's uh, we have found a uh, problem in the configuration so I will fix this problem and upload and uh,
upload a fixed version we are missing the proper configuration for this effect it's just a minor configuration problem but <laughs> it is there so as you can see this large triangle is blurred we currently with this bug i have just found <laughs> if you found the same bug please don't report it because i, I already know about it so uh, this large triangle is now blurred and now when i use the morph effect maybe i should i should not do that i would have to also add a blur on this first frame and then it would interpolate the blur values so let's look at the morph function later so okay what else is was changed the new cursor editor should support these two uh, cursor roles that were in, uh, added in Windows 10 location select and person, person select and if you are on Windows 10 or 11 this should modify your active cursors uh, what else do we have uh, yes this we have improved wizards for creation the, the wizards all of them now work with both raster layers and vector layers and so i can for example let me first delete the raster layer generate a, an arrow and I, this is a new wizard in this version when I click on it, I can add a symbol, additional symbol to this cursor and we have three. So we have person select, location select and question mark. You can control the size of it. You can control where it should be added to the cursor. You can control the colors and so on. So, for example, like this. And because I have created this cursor with a vector layer, these generated shapes are vector shapes. And you can now con continue. You can modify them as you, as you wish. For example, you can change their colors. So that's, I believe these are the major changes mm -hmm. specific to the cursor editor. Maybe this customization panel also supports the location and person select roles do we have any commands we have one command 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 uh, will there be 3d support like in the 2007 version of the cursor editor uh, not in the main version but there may be 3d support in the in the daily version after re release okay let's go to real paint so and looked on some more changes so and you may have not noticed a small change to this image from clipboard wizard and it works like this when I put something into clipboard 
and then switch to this page, it will be automatically selected. I have copied the screen into the clipboard using a keyboard shortcut. So here, if you have something in your clipboard and click on this create button, it will be automatically selected. And you can uh, also activate it by pressing Ctrl V, which is a standard uh, keyboard shortcut for pasting. So it is just uh, a minor convenient change. So the new image wizard, if you uh, if you are using the current version, there is a new raster image and new vector image wizard in, in the current version. In the new version, there will be just this one wizard, new image. And here you can select whether you want to start with a vector layer, a raster layer, possibly with some other vector uh, layer types. And when I do that and go back, it was auto selected because the image is still in my clipboard. You can now see a list of recently used uh, settings. So if you, for example, create icons, icons uh, as using vector layers of this size, and sometimes you are creating wallpapers as a uh, as raster images, you can do this, and it will be added to the list of recently used settings, and you can switch between these by just clicking on them, or you can you can double click them, and it will create a new image with these parameters. Because I personally, personally uh, found that I am, for example, creating icons 100 times 100 pixels, of, and sometimes I create icons with 256 times 256 pixels, and sometimes I am creating preview images for these streams that are uh, 1280 times 720 pixels, and with this list of recently used settings, um, it will make uh, the whole process faster for me. So let's create something with a vector layer. So one of the changes that I do not talk about too often is this is the ability to create groups so let me create at least three layers and for example group these two let's put something into that those layers and let's put this into the top layer And we can now, for example, apply styles to this layer group. For example, let's add this, this new long shadow effect to this layer group. Maybe turn this top layer off. And you can see that the effect is different uh, from the alternative scenario. If I added long shadow on each of these two layers, the effect will be different. I can show you how it would look. So let me turn off this one 
and you can see that this this red rectangle is casting the shadow over the blue one because the blue le the blue le rectangle is in the layer under this one and the image is composed from bottom to top more or less the effect there is a small inconsistency with the effect but first this effect is applied this effect is applied to the blue rectangle that's then merged together and separately this effect is applied to the, the rect red rectangle and these two are then merged here so if i turn them off and turn this one that is on the group on you can see that these two rectangles are merged first and then on the result is applied this effect so you can use it to your advantage if you want and you can use the layer group to your advantage if you want to apply one or more effects on a group of layers um, if you remember let me check the comments no, no. if you remember the old version there was a small pan panel here that was used to control the blending mode of the of the selected layer and opacity of the selected layer so instead of this panel we now have the opacity layer style that you can turn on and off using this button and if it's uh, selected here is the panel it controls it and uh, this button here controls uh, allows you to change the blending mode for the selected layer okay and what else do we have what else is new you can mm, reorder the effects using dragging and dropping with your mouse these checkboxes are also new hmm. You can apply you can apply effects using uh, merge layers button. I don't know whether you have noticed it, but what has happened is that I have pressed merge layers while having the long shadow selected, and it has first merge these two uh, inside layers and then it has applied the long shadow on them and this opacity remained as a layer style on the newly created layer this layer group was re replaced with the newly created layer and because the opacity uh, is applied after the long shadow it remained as a layer style. If I had the opacity selected and pressed merge layers, the opacity will, uh, would also be merged into this new layer. So that's that. So we have already seen this style. Mm menu but let's uh, play with it some more there are some new new effects that were not ava available in the old version so the long shadow we have already seen there is the projected shadow effect and you can see that this is one of the maybe maybe applied 
to this other layer it will be better better visible so this is maybe it's not better visible but let's hide it uh, the new um, version allows you to modify some of these layer styles direct, directly on the canvas so the projected shadow is one of the effects that allows you to do that so it should be much faster and more intuitive for you so this is the projected shadow is now a layer style of this layer one that contains the green rectangle let me check the comments quickly no new comments um, there there are some new some more new effects that can be applied as layer styles for example symmetry so this allows you to uh, easier draw symmetric objects and the order of the effects is important you can now see that the symmetry is applied after the projected shadow is applied you can see the projected shadow here and then the, here this is the axis of symmetry and here is the reflected part of this projected shadow when i reorder the layer styles it will be different now the symmetry is applied first and then the projected projected shadow effect so here you can see that the shadow of this right part of the image is here and one more thing the symmetry effect is able to work with vector layers layers and apply itself uh, while keeping the layer as a vector layer so for example when i now when i use the merge layers button now it will while having the line symmetry selected let me click it it will apply the line symmetry on the vector layer that uh, contains the green rectangle and the result of this is a polygon uh, that is a result of the unification of the two uh, rectangles the original one and the one created by the line symmetry and you can now continue modifying this creating shape uh, as a vector vector shape so let's undo the changes these three effects uh, are the are the currently the only ones that can work directly with vector layers without convert, con, converting them to raster, raster layers first so let me demonstrate uh, what it would look like for example if i add glow and make it as the first first um, effect the effects are applied from bottom to top so the colored glue is the first one applied and when I merge it with the layer you can now see that this was changed to a rust layer because 
the glow effect is now um, merged that means that it's applied and the result of this cannot be a vector layer because there is no way how to incorporate the glow effect into the shapes that can be in a vector layer so it has con converted the vector layer into a raster layer when, when I have pressed the mar marriage layers button so these only these three effects uh, don't convert layers into a uh, raster layer they are, they are they are able to work with the vector shapes directly and the effects are not always the same for example the transformation tool may not be able to transform every vector shape uh, exactly for example if you do a perspective projection on an ellipse then the result uh, will not be an ellipse but it will still try to remain as an ellipse so be warned that the effects can be different so what else is new I have a list of changes on my blog we have talked about layer groups layer styles canvas style uh, some there are some performance improvements and you can control some of this using this tab in the options you can choose how many cores is the application able to use uh, what else is new long shadow we have talked a bit uh, deleting and application of shapes so in the current version deletion and application was handled uh, via different commands and in the new version this system was unified and similarly as uh, copying cutting and pasting items works uh, via this unified system deleting and applicating wor works now we are the same system as well and that means that when I am here and press, press the delete button it will delete the selected ob object when I click for example here on the line symmetry uh, layer effect and then press delete it will delete this effect and also the menu here reflected delete effects because you can have one or more effects can be selected and it will delete uh, all of them and when I click here this one it will delete the selected layer so the application will be marked with this fork icon and this one this small icon repre represents the things we are duplicating or deleting for example like this you can see that now we have this shape here that means the vector shape is being deleted or duplicated okay we have we are able to use crop and crop tool uh, from the vector layer and that is not possible in the current version we also have the brush tool it's still not very stable I would say but you can you can use the brush tool from a vector layer and you can see the strokes here and you can then change 
the colors of the strokes and so on you can then for example delete it if you don't like it so you can use the brush tool uh, in the vector layer it should work correctly when you use ju just this Uh, just this simple circle you can change, modify the size of it and so on you can experiment with, by, with this button and use use for example a picture brush but uh, the images used here maybe just turn off the glow effect and delete this one so these, these images are not saved in the file of the image so if you for example create something using a picture brush and then send that file to a friend and he will not have this picture brush because that picture brush is a file on their computer it it won't display uh, the brush stroke so just be warned it's a limitation in the current version maybe in the future the file will be able to hold this picture brush inside the same uh, applies for example to fonts if you if you download some custom fonts and use them then then and then send the file to another computer where these fonts are not available it will use the default font instead So uh, that's not you no know, no comments. Okay. Uh, SVG import and export was improved. So the current version can ex export to SVG, but there are some limitations. The new version should be able to import most of the SVG files that you can find online I have some oh, that's a simple SVG file isn't, an, isn't there a better one so you should be able to import almost all simple SVG files you can find on web and then export them but be warned that the importing and exporting is not 100% there may be some losses something may look a bit different if you download an SVG file modify it and then export it hmm. Where else? especially when some special not very commonly used SVG features are used in the original file okay that's that um, okay the application now supports uh, scaling factors larger than 150 percent so if you have a 4K display or a small or a small notebook with higher resolution display that is running at for example 200 uh, percent the application should scale properly all these icons are different because the old ones uh, it would be very hard to modify the old ones 
for proper scaling. These are now all vector images and any scaling you configure on your windows, real world paint should look fine. Uh, outline alignment is another small feature that was added to the new version. Uh, this is how it looks in the old version and this is, that is also the default in the current version or the new version. But you can change the, the alignment of this outline. So the outline can be centered around the drawn shape or it can also be outside. For my uses, I keep using this the most of the times because that allows me to control the real shape outline of the shape I'm creating. But for most of other image editors and for example for Inkscape the only supported mode is this one, the centered, because SVG only support this way of uh, drawing outlines. Mm. So if you are, for example, creating, uh, if your goal is to create an SVG file, then make sure that you are drawing using this mode. Otherwise, the result may look a little different. I mean a little different after exporting it to SVG and viewing it in a web browser or such. Morph command, we have already talked about it. The Another new function in the real world paint is this batch, batch tab and that allows you to quickly convert images for example changing the image format you can add watermark, watermark resize them and you can configure your own operation to apply to multiple images. This list will, I will be modifying this list of the of the operations that are available after you install the application. This is not yet complete problem. Some of these are not doing anything useful. And finally the recoloring tool, my nemesis. It works somehow. I have tried to improve it since the last stream, but it is st still not ideal. Uh, what, what, we were, what, what were we using as an example last time? Last time it was the JPEG file, if I'm not, uh, or PNG file. Maybe, yeah, I think this file was what we were, what, that's what we've been using. So, does it work somehow? So, you can see that not everything was modified because my tolerance is set to just 10% and if I increase it uh, then it will also recolor this brighter part but you can see that I have not marked this part so let me do it once more maybe use a bigger brush for like recoloring like this. So 
I'm not sure whether it is visible on the YouTube stream, but it still doesn't work perfectly. You can see a slight red, I would say mist or echo here, because it's quite hard to determine what to record and what to ignore. But it's better than nothing, I would say. You can see that it can preserve the yellow color quite nicely. And if you are happy with this, then it's fine. And before you apply this, you can change the color like this. This is now marked with the recoloring brush and until uh, and you can change these parameters and the color uh, as, as long as you don't click on apply. So it should help you this tool. So there are no more questions and if you have questions please post them now because otherwise I will be finishing this stream. Where can I download the latest version? Let me show you. So when you go here in the software tab, click on Reward Pane or Reward Cursor Editor, then you have this daily unstable small link here. Uh, rwpaint64.zip and that is the link to this preview version here and for cursor editor you also have this this daily unstable link here and this is a modified random layer I usually make sure that I upload the new version before each stream but uh, I may uh, upload uh, the versions more often if I found a bug or if someone finds a bug, tell me about it, then I will upload the fixed version as fast as possible. Okay, uh, any other questions? You can also post questions after the stream under the YouTube video and I will answer them later. So let me wait 15 more seconds before we, I close the finish the stream. If there are no more questions, of course. Is the Linux codec still supported in the new version? Uh, I think it should work the same as in the old version. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's installed here. It's probably not installed, well, but I will make sure that uh, the Linux codec uh, will be there. Was it a plugin in the old version or was it installed by default? Okay, I, I will make sure that the Linux codec is working as it should. Can check whether it is it is here codec. 
Okay, okay, okay. Hmm, not here. Context. So let me copy this file. And I would have to restart the application. So it, it should work uh, the same as before, but it is not um, in the in the zip file. It will pro it will be available as a codec, uh, as a downloadable plugin codec. After the final release. Okay. Yeah. So. That's it. Uh, any other questions? looks like there are no more questions so thank you for watching and thank you for being a fan of reward paint or cursor editor and hopefully it will have a bright future so goodbye <laughs>